Here we have it. The 390 cordless. Uh, no power needed at all, which is such a beneficial thing sometimes when yeah, you are in areas where you cannot get power. Power source is always very important, but hey, there is times where you have no choice and it's not available. So here we have the new 390 cordless. This comes with two 18 slash 54 volt flex volt XR. So we've got two of these. Next, we have the 15 meter lead hose, whatever you would like to call it. Next up, we're gonna get, get the bad boy out. I have tried and tested this already. So this here, very similar to the 390 corded. The only difference is, obviously, that it's got no um, hard wide power in the box. Also comes manuals, everything you need to know about what you want to do with a machine, how to operate, how to clean it, you know, troubleshooting, everything's in there. But in saying that, you've got troubleshooting, you can always get in touch with the legends uh, Go Industrial, or you can hit us up on um, your social, whatever you like to do. Also comes with the contractor PC. Uh, awesome lightweight, uh, very economical to use. So awesome match for these two here. And of course we have the charger. So also this is one hour charge peeps. So you know, I was getting one hour of spray, um, a bit over actually. I was probably getting an hour and 20 minutes of spray um, and I was getting between 12 10 to 12 liters um, on each battery also. And why I was using one, the other one was on charge. Time this one ran out, I could put the new one straight in and you could just interchange them and you could operate all day. But hey, like I said, if you haven't got the power to charge, you can buy these separately. And if you want to, um, you know, buy a bunch of them, you, you know, three, four, five, whatever, you're getting an hour each one to spray. So if you've got a job that's going for, you know, five hours or something like that, as you think, if you've got five of these ready to rock, you're gonna get the job done. And at the end of the day, you're gonna save money, you're gonna save time, not trying to fight um, or worry about the power situation also. So that's what we have. What we're gonna do, we've got a garage door here, we're gonna spray out quickly. I'm gonna set this thing up, give you a bit of a rundown on how we set it up how we load it up, how we spray out of it, and then all the way through to dismantling it, wash up, packing it away, back in the box. Hope you all enjoy. Let's do it. Always make sure that you just, you don't want to go over tighten it, but you just want to make sure it's got a bit of tension on there. Same thing, always just walk out your line, very important. This bit connects to your gun. Here we have it. This is the first time this one's actually been used. I used the other one last time because I didn't. Oh, oh, this already does come with quick releases up. I right, pull this down. And then you can. Well, you didn't even need to do that. Sorry, but usually does come. Well, it will come with your 60 mesh filter. Also interchangeable with the 100 mesh, whatever material or product you are spraying, of course. So what I always do, I never sit it in the way they're like that. This is what this little bit here is for. So as you can see, inside here, this goes in there. And then all you can do, just hold it upside down like that, especially when it's new, it's pretty lubed up as well. You do have the oils um, in the machine, in the handpiece. 
and connect it back up. Um, there's your safety as well, which is always good because the trigger on these are pretty light. So you want to make sure you got that as well. So next thing, connect this one to your to your gun. Same thing, thing here. You're going to need two shifters, spinners, whatever you, you've got, and they just do operate the other way. Just same thing. They just it's opposite way. So yeah, not too much force, but enough to make sure it's completely on. That way you've got your handpiece now connected from your handpiece to your machine, your sprayer. First thing, remove, push down, take out. This is pretty much just a safety, um, well not a safety, more, more a storage cap, just to keep it protected, that's all. Uh, so here we have it as well. You do have your earth, so this Obviously here, uh, I didn't really know what it was when I first started painting, but yeah, over time I've learnt this is actually the earth. So when you are running any solvent based products or any flammable liquids, always make sure this is earthed off to something. Um, so yeah, we will just actually put it back on here for now, keep it out of the way. Uh, this is the area here where you do slide in your 54 volt batteries. So this just slides straight in there like this clicks in you do have the option well with the batteries it does have your push button where you can see how much um, battery charge you do have also so that there is pretty much all set up ready to go to spray um, yeah you don't realize how easy it is I know it's only one cord but for us it just makes it so much easier sometimes instead of dragging around multiple leads um, a lot of the time you're pulling your power out of the sockets while you're going, you know, there can be a lot of benefits to having um, a battery powered, even if, you know, you have got a hardwired power supply. So anyways, here we go here. I always like to as well, and we'll get these out, a couple of spare, spare little, um, it's always good to have a good range of your tips and everything as well. But what I always like to do before I, go putting any paint in or anything like that I always just fill up a bucket half a bucket of clean water and saying that you do want to make sure it's clean as well because if you got anything in like this you can't use it yeah, let's go get another bucket yeah, you don't want to be sucking up any um, dried up paint or materials dirt dust whatever through your machine. Um, it's just going to end up causing clog, um, blockages, clogging up um, your gun and you know your filters and everything like that. That's it, you don't need too much in there. Always sit that there. Just going to put anything that I'm not using out of the way quickly. All right, so here we have it. I'm gonna open up. A fresh drum of Dulux Weather Shield Lotion made up to Colorbond Woodland, great. All right, so what we can do now as well, but just one thing before we start, I always like to give it a bit of a dunk. Uh, that way, you know, you're just getting it all lubricated. So then when you're putting it in your paint and back into water, it's going to be a lot easier to clean up. So as well, you can, you, you do have a bit of um, oils and everything, obviously from shipping, storage, whatever else. So I'm just going to quickly blow any of these out. I'm just running a bit of water through into the machine and out through the prime hose. This is your prime hose, so this will prime your machine. Um, to then obviously start pumping through your hose and out your handpiece. Anyway, so this is down now. I'll have the switch here, which let's turn it on. It illuminates as well, so that's pretty cool, I think. Nice little touch, but here we have it now. This is prime. On the down is prime. 
your side is spray so always have it down on your prime position whenever you're changing um, pretty much your tips always have your pressure down um, your tips always have your pressure down because it won't prime it won't build up pressure to your handpiece all right so now i've got it switched down to prime it's turned on i'm just going to quickly see as you can see sucking up any it does take a little bit of a while to start going through there you go You go, just turn it down now, it's pretty much all right to go. We've got the clean water running through now. So you've pretty much taken out any of the oils or anything uh, that's sitting in the machine when it's purchased. So now what I can do, I'm quite easily just take, just drain the, drain the water out of it and go straight into the paint. I always just have the prime. I'll never really sit the prime inside the paint. I'll either have it sitting on top or I'll just have it sitting in another drum like this uh, because you're always gonna prime through some water that's in your machine before it, it will actually start um, coming out with paint. So. Make sure everything is all done up. Make sure your pressure um, is obviously down. And now what we can do, you always want to change, you always want your pressure down when you're flipping between prime and spray as well. So pressure's down. Now what we can do, we can go through, while it's still on prime, we'll turn it up, we'll wait for, for the paint to come through here. As soon as you see the paint coming out, leave it, you know, one to two seconds. Um, just make sure you get all the air bubbles, everything out, and then pretty much you're ready to go. So I always just leave that sitting in your paint. Always give it a bit of a squirt around because if you don't, be careful as well. This will full, fill up and especially it will dry up if it's a hot summer's day. So that's why I do keep it just in the, um, in a pot of, or yeah, drum of water. When you're putting on your tip guard as well, push the trigger guard down. Like I said, before you put your tip in as well, just make sure your press is down as well. Just makes it a lot easier that, of course, well, for sure. Um, all right, so here we go. Before you go putting your tip in as well, always make sure that you get, you know, run your paint through the machine, uh, through your lead, and then, yeah. That's weird, eh? Yeah? Just make sure that you, after you prime your paint, you always want to run your paint through without a tip on first. That way, you know, you're saving time because you'll be there forever running, you know, um, your paint through with your tip on. And you're gonna be going through your tips a lot quicker because at the end of the day, you'll be putting liters and liters through um, when there's really no need. So yeah, you'll be saving on tips as also. So always have, like I said, it down. So I always leave, when I go, when I am changing from my prime to my spray, I always put my trigger down first like this and then turn up my pressure. Um, otherwise, you have your pressure all the way turned up, put on your um, trigger and you're gonna blow paint everywhere. So always hold down your trigger first. Shoot out until the paint comes out. As you can see, it's all paint now, no water. Turn it back down. I always put it straight back to prime. That way 
Now you're pretty much ready to go loading in your tip, depending on what tip uh, for the surface and the product is what you're gonna wanna choose as well, depending on the conditions. Also, it plays a big part. If you've got a lot of wind, hot, um, humid, whatever it is, always plays a part in what tip size you're gonna use. Go Industrial has done a master article, pretty much going through the whole range of tip sizes with the products um, and the surfaces and everything like that you need. So head on over and um, check it out. But anyways, here we are, we're gonna go through and put the, this one I'm just gonna run the 410. I was gonna thinking about 308, but it's getting late in the afternoon. I need to get this on, so a bit wider. The fan, um, you know, the 10 size is pretty awesome for, any type of metal work or anything like that as well. All right, so now pressure's turned down. We're gonna put in our tip. We're running the FFL P410, like I said on this one. So just squeeze it in. You can hear it pretty much lock into place. Ready? Hear that? And now it's on a side. If you're not using your gun as well for half an hour, whatever time, you can always sit it to the side. Uh, that way you're not gonna have your orifice exposed, which will uh, potentially dry out and block up. So if you're not using it, sit it to the side, sit in a pot of water like this. A lot of the time I have it sitting like this. I'll have it filled up to just to where the tip guard is. So that way you've just gotten this end. Um, you know, if you're keeping all air out of from this side and to this side, there's no reason why the paint will dry out inside your machine or your gun. So, there we go. All right, we are pretty much ready to go. We've primed up, we've assembled everything we need to, tip in now, machine in the paint. Uh, so yeah, here we go. I'll just will prime it quickly again for two seconds. There we go, turn it to pressure, pressure down, remember. Pressure's always down, peeps. Flick it to spray. You don't want to go holding this on now uh, while you turn it up. It was only for while you were shooting out your water. So now, turn up the pressure. Usually running your FFLP tips, your green, with your green here, as you can see. So these are usually, um, your low pressure delivers longer battery life also, but your low pressure with your FFLP tips is your green. And then soon as you start to go into the blue, you can run, you know, your LP tips or your Rack X, whatever you prefer. But yeah, always try to keep it in there. Quickly, we'll just check out our line, make sure we've got no tails or train tracks. Um, and if we do, we simply just have to turn up that pressure until we eliminate any um, lines or anything like that. So as you can see there, that is absolutely beautiful. Check it. Yeah. That's, that's really nice. So there we go. Pressure's ready to go. This is, like I said, the Dulux Weather Shield. We have got it set perfectly, a nice bar there, even between them two there, I think. Um, yeah, we're gonna get a nice, beautiful finish on this. Start off on the corner. Um, like I said with this as well, you contract a PC. It is a two finger, or you can wind it down to blah, 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 blah. Just undo at the end here. Slides down to four, whatever you. And you can do three in the middle. Or three, one, if you prefer. You just use the one. So here we go. I'll start off on this corner. Um, we'll move it nice, smooth. So what's your technique to doing a garage? You do perimeter, to cut in first with the gun? No, no, no. When I'm doing a garage door, I never do a perimeter. I'm sorry, but one thing that frustrates me so much, and I don't really get frustrated, but is seeing painters paint a garage door, or anything really in particular, where you've taped up, there is no reason why that you would do a perimeter. You do a perimeter on your ceilings because you're doing obviously your corners. You don't perimeter your wall and then fill it in. So there's no reason why you would perimeter. Start off on the corner. Um, like I said with this as well, you contract a PC. It is a two finger or you can wind it down to blah, 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 blah. Just undo at the end here. Slides down to four, whatever you. And you can do three in the middle. Or three, one, if you prefer. You just use the one. So here we go. I'll start off on this corner. Um, we'll move it nice, smooth. 
So what's your technique to doing a garage? You do perimeter, cut in first with the gun? No, no, no. When I'm doing a garage door, I never do a perimeter. I'm sorry, but one thing that frustrates me so much, and I don't really get frustrated, but is seeing painters paint a garage door, or anything really in particular, where you've taped up, there is no reason why that you would do a perimeter. You do a perimeter on your ceilings because you're doing obviously your corners. You don't perimeter your wall and then fill it in. So there's no reason why you would perimeter a garage door. It's exactly the same as a wall. So yeah, that's one thing that I just don't understand. You're creating more paint on the one surface. You are not getting a nice even flow from side to side. So yeah, that's one thing that I um, definitely don't like to do. Thanks for bringing that up. All right, we'll just start in this corner. I always hold my lead out because, you know, you have an idea, you can kick over it and whatever else. So I always try to have it pinned back as much as I can um, away and just use, work with what I need. What you do as well, when you come down to a bottom, because you've got this, really hard to get any of these underneath edges. And two, when you come down to something, you will get a lot more air and compression coming out off the wall if you have it like this. So I always just like to turn it over, flip it, as I say. That way. Get that all the way down to the bottom and underneath to the surface. So there we have it. There's spraying a garage door with the Graco contractor running the Graco 390 cordless. Thank you for tuning in. Hope you like what you've seen. If you're interested in one of these machines, Give the good guys that go um, a holler and they'll sort you out obviously with a good price, always sales, always service. Um, yeah, and they'll look after you 100%. So that's a bit of a rundown. What I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna um, pretty much start disassembling it all and we'll show you how we take it all apart, uh, wash everything up, put it back in the box and we out of here. Getting late in the afternoon, big day, painting, but we love it. Like I said, before I even like to start, I always like to have half a drum of clean water, uh, just so you can disperse any of your water through, any existing oils or anything like that in the machine. Now, I have another bucket. I always have two spare buckets ready to go for clean water. Um, so here's my second clean bucket. But what I do, I don't use my clean one now. Wherever I've dispersed any of the uh, dirty water from when I was setting up the machine, I'll put that in first, and then I have my second bucket ready to go straight after that, and that should be enough to do what I need to do. Always make sure you clean it out so it's clear water. Like I can pretty much drink out of um, the machine after I've cleaned it, and that's what you want. That is what is key. So first off, okay. Put your bucket to the side here because you've got to make some room for your bucket of water. Put this here like that. Make sure your pressures are all down. Your pressure's all the way down. Make sure your prime valve is down as well. So that way you're pretty much ready to go like that. What you want to do now, you want to 
get out your suction tube. You want to give it a bit of a shake around, get any little bit of excess that's in there. All the paint helps. Then we just put it straight into the bucket of water. First off, what I always like to do, just give it a bit of a stroke. Get all this completely off here. See how you've got it around the bottom here as well. Just give it a good shake around. What I even do, I sit it all the way down and I'll just sort of just hit it so I'm getting any of the water pushing back into the mesh guard, your rock stopper. Um, and that way, yeah, it's, it's, it, it helps stop it uh, from drying out or blocking up any, any bit more. So yeah, now we've got that sitting in there. We've got our main suction tube, tube in the water. We've got our prime in the water. So what I always do now, is, this is a process, hold this over your prime hose, and then you've got it in prime down here as well. Just turn it up just a notch. Should only take a couple of seconds. As soon as it starts to run out water. There you go, you can see how it starts to thin down just that tab. After a couple of times you use your machine, you'll be able to start reading um, the noise of it. It comes into play a lot. You know, I can usually tell from the machines I have when it's sucking water, when it's sucking paint. It usually um, pins a bit more or pumps a bit more uh, when the paint usually starts coming through because it's a thicker product. So it has to work a little bit harder to pump it. So anyway, we've got all the paint that we need through. You can see it's just a bit of water now. Now put that into your first drum of water. Sit it there. Leave it for you know 15 seconds or so. You're just getting all you're doing now is pretty much getting the paint and then you're going to out into your pipe house. But you don't want to do it too much because no point completely cleaning out this part of the system until you clean out all the paint through. Um, your machine and out of your lead, uh, out of your gun, should I say. So what I always like to do now as well, always got your pressures down, remember, turn to the side, take out, drop it in a bucket of water, okay? Uh, that way we can do that a bit later on because you do have to suck out the, blow out the paint in your machine, uh, into your, you have to blow out the paint, through your hose. So what we'll do, same thing again, prime down, pressure down, turn it to your spray, hold down, because like I said, now you're going shooting paint into a fresh drum of paint. So if you've got your pressure up, it's gonna go everywhere. And just so, explain that with 15 meters of hose right now, it's all paint we can recover and not waste. Yeah, all right. So with what we've got now, we've got 0.8, it's usually between 0.8 um, to 0.7 of a litre, which comes in your 15 metre lead. So if you're running two leads, you pretty much got 1.6 litres that's in your, um, your, in your line. So you always want to get all that out. You don't want to waste any paint. So what we're going to do, we're going to just hold your trigger down like this. Okay, I've got my uh, spray turned on. And now I'll just quickly turn it up and as you can see, it's shooting it out. So you will be able to hear it. See that now? That's pretty much it. As soon as it starts to work a bit less, you know that water's coming. So what I like to always do, just put it in your paint now. Finish off the process. And see how I've got water coming out. So just hold down the trigger. You want to probably do this for about a minute or so. All I'm doing now is circulating the paint through the machine and back into the same drum. What I always like to do as well, I always like to turn down my pressure and then I'll put it back in into the, all the way, or just your tip guard back into your water, and I'll turn it all the way up, and I'll just sort of boots out, it self cleans, it blows anything out at high pressure, um, out of the machine, yeah, it's like that. All 
All right, so we've gave it a bit of a blowout. We've circulated all the paint. We've taken all the paint out of uh, the handpiece, the priming valve, your suction hose, and now we've just got dirty water in there. So what we do now, turn it all the way back down your pressure, back to prime. It's pretty much just repeating the same process from what we've just done, but we've cleaned water. So what we'll do now, take this out. Always, once you're done with your paint, put it away. There's nothing worse than having an open drum. You know, you come around, you accidentally kick it, and you're just gonna make a mess. So once you're finished with it, make sure you just put it out of the way. It's nice and safe, you don't have to worry about it. Now I've got this, like I said, here's the second drum of clean water I filled up. Uh, very similar. Leave your prime in. Take out your suction hose, your tube. Just make sure you get any access out of it before you go putting it in. Put it in this one, okay? And now, same, same process. Prime's down, turn up your pressure, and it'll start blowing out clean water. We'll clean your water. see it starting to clean so I don't go really any further than there because you're not going to get it much cleaner until you get your, your hose and everything clean okay pressure back down as always now what I can do same process turn it to your spray hold your gun just your tip guard in the water with your trigger down and just slowly See it'll start getting clearer and clearer and clearer. But as you can see here, it is pretty clean now. But then like I said, I always like to put it all the way back in the water for the last couple of times and then I will always crank up my pressure and that just blows out any um, existing paint that's in there. So always crank it up and then I go like that and it just gives a bit of a boot. I think it's sort of more like the self-cleaning on the Merca. It's sort of the same thing as I think anyway. And as you can see now, I can pretty much just start spraying that out and it's clean. Bye. Right, so pretty much after we're running clean water, what we want to do, we want to blow out our tip. We always want to make sure that you blow out your tip when you're finished. You know, you can sit in a bucket of water, but still, if you do forget about it, it will go hard. And yeah, it's just going to, you know, cause you um, dramas down the track by not having it when you need it, of course. So, once again, pressure down and when you're going as well I'll just quickly quickly go back to where I was which is here be careful as well because sometimes if you've got your pressure cranked up and and you go flicking it down to prime you're potentially going to damage the needle and the spring in your prime valve so that's the difference when you're always switching between spray and prime or vice versa make sure your pressure is turned down uh, pressure always down so as well, sometimes even if your pressure's built up, um, it's still in your machine. So when you go down from spray to prime, sometimes you might have to, well, just hold, hold your hose because sometimes it can push a lot of pressure out through here and it will pop out your prime hose as well. As you can see, watch. See how, just do it nice and slowly and that way it will release nice and slowly also. So here we are, pressure's all the way down. Now we're just gonna blow out our tip. It's pretty much the last thing you do. We said you don't want to be blowing through um, dirty water through your tip. You're just wasting um, the longevity of your, your tips. So now we've got the tip in, back to spray, crank it up. You can see here. So now nice fan. So you always want to go this way, flip it over. Make sure you go this way. 
That way you're blowing it all out completely. And there we have it. All right, now the next process is, if it's gonna be, you know, if I'm gonna use it the next day, I'm not gonna use my pump palm up. But if it's gonna be a couple of days or it's gonna go in storage, what I'll do now, I'll just pour some pump armor in. Um, this is getting used first thing in the morning, so I'm not gonna really worry about it. Pour in your pump armor, repeat the same process through your prime valve, your hose, um, and then, yeah, you can turn it off, dismantle it all, pack it away, and you know it's cleaned, uh, you know it's got the right products in it to be stored, and you're ready to rock for next time. That's pretty much from out of the box to setting up to how we like to load, spray, to packing it up and washing it up. Washing it up and packing it up, yo. So thank you all for tuning in. As always, it absolutely means the world to the PBJ slash Go crew. Uh, yeah, we, we truly appreciate everyone always watching in, showing all the love, the positive vibes. And, and that's what it's all about, pumping that paint and pushing that positive 100%. So much love and um, yeah. Look out and look after one another.